Welcome back to Understanding Python. My name is Jake, and today I'll be showing you how to create and use Python virtual environments. As we go, if you learned something new, let me know by liking the video. Now let's get started. Python virtual environments allows us to have development environments that are largely isolated from our main system, and more importantly, other development environments we may also work in. To create a virtual environment in newer versions of Python, we simply run the command python -m venv and the path to our virtual environment. Since I want to create this virtual environment in the current directory, I don't need to specify a path, I just need to specify the environment name. We'll call this one env1. If you're unfamiliar with the syntax dash "-m", and then a name, it's simply running Python, specifying which module dash "-m", to run, and we're telling Python to run the venv, or virtual environment, module. After that, we pass in arguments, and we're only passing in a single argument for this, which is the name env1. We hit enter, and it has created our new virtual environment. We can see this by listing the directory, and we see we have a new directory called env1. Let's move into this real quick and take a look inside. Inside this new directory, we can see a few subdirectories as well as a pyvnv.config file. Now, some of the more important directories would be bin. Let's take a look in there. And bin is where we're going to either have copies or symbolic links to our Python binaries. Here at the bottom, we see we have three symlinks to user bin Python, and then my default Pythons on my main system. Whether or not these will be symlinks is largely up to the operating system that you're running on. Inside this directory is where we're gonna have a number of scripts along with these Python binaries. The most important one when dealing with virtual environments is activate, but we'll touch more on that later. Next, let's look under the lib directory. We see we have Python 3-9. If we go into that, we see we have a site packages directory. And then going into that, we see the site packages that are currently installed in this virtual environment. By default, this would be very minimal. However, there are some options you can run when creating the virtual environment to include these site packages from your main system. For now, just know that we have the ones that are only really required for pip. Since we did a pretty basic usage of the venv module, the contents of pyv and v are going to be relatively small. Here we see it has a path for our home directory. It says include system site packages is false and the Python version is 3.9.5, which corresponds to the Python version installed on my system. All right, back out of that directory, and then to activate our virtual environment in bash, we're going to run the command source, then the path to that activate file, which is env1 bin activate. Due to my terminal styling, you can see on the left, that we have a little E here, and then ENV1, letting us know that we are in the virtual environment ENV1. To get out of a virtual environment, you simply run the command deactivate. And now we're back out. Now there's a few different ways which you can tell whether you're in a virtual environment or not. That's because this activate script primarily updates your system's path and manages a few other environment variables. So if we echo our path right now, we can see it looks like a typical path. At the beginning, we have USR local bin, sbin, and then all the normal ones you typically see. Also, if we try to echo another environment variable, which is set by Python virtual environments, which is virtual env, we see that that environment variable is not set. So let's reactivate this. Let's re-echo our virtual env environment variable. And we see that we have that environment variable set to slash home, Jake, understanding Python, V A N V, and then finally the directory to our virtual environment, which is env1. Also, if we re-echo our path, we see that the very beginning of this has the same directory and then slash bin. 
letting our system know to look for additional scripts in this location. Our virtual environments bin directory. All right, at this point, we are free to install third party packages. So let's install a couple of them right now and see what it does to our virtual environment. Pip install ssh2 python, and we're also going to install scrappy. We get a little warning that our pip is out of date, even though our main system's pip is up to date because this version of pip is the one that's bootstrapped in by our Python version. So it's going to be a little bit out of date unless our Python version was just updated. But we'll ignore that for now. Now that we've installed it too, we can check Scrappy's help text and see that yes, indeed, this tool is installed. If we look back under our virtual environments bin directory, we can see that we have a few new scripts installed, most of which are dependencies of Scrappy. So we have that Scrappy script right there. Additionally, if we check under the libraries and then Python 3-9 site packages, we can see we have quite a few more packages installed as dependencies of those two packages that we just installed, SSH2 Python as well as Scrappy. So since we have verified that Scrappy help works within our environment, let's deactivate and see if it also works in our main system. And here we see it says bash scrappy command not found. Do we want to install it? We'll say no. Okay. So it was installed perfectly in our virtual environment without affecting our main environment. All right. Let's create a second virtual environment. We'll call this one creatively enough env2. Again, python m venv. And the name of our environment is env2. Okay, it's created. Let's activate it. And just for good measure, we'll see that Scrappy is indeed not installed. Perfect. And we'll install parallel SSH. Again, ignoring the pip warning. Okay, so we'll do pip freeze, which is a way that we can get a list of packages installed. We see that parallel SSH is installed. Version is 2.5.4. Beautiful. We also see that we don't have any kind of mention of Scrappy or any of those dependencies. But if we deactivate that and instead reactivate environment one and run pip freeze, we see we have quite a bit more packages installed as part of this. However, Parallel SSH is nowhere to be found. Perfect. So both of our environments are completely independent of the others, as well as independent of our main systems. This is how people maintain multiple development environments without worrying about conflicting dependencies, especially dependency versions between different projects. So say, for example, that the project that we're currently working on requires parcel 1.6, However, we're also working on an older project that requires parcel 1.5. If we didn't have virtual environments, we'd have to figure out another way to have parcel 1.5 installed when we're working on one project and parcel 1.6 installed when we're working on this one. And things get really messy from that point on. I myself maintain several virtual environments in my main programming directory. One thing you may notice with this is that they all share a similar naming structure. That's because I wrote a pretty flexible bash script to allow me to easily switch between different virtual environments, which I'll show you guys right now. Here's the code to my switch function, which is included in my bash RC, which means I can use it wherever I am within my systems directories. What this will do is when you say switch and then give it a name, if a virtual environment under that name doesn't exist in the programming directory, then it will create that virtual environment. After creating it, it will activate that virtual environment. If the name did already exist, so it's a virtual environment that was already established, it will simply activate that. If you say switch with no arguments, it will deactivate whatever current virtual environment you're in. I'll include a link to the source code for this in the description of this video. A quick demonstration, we'll get out of this virtual environment by saying switch. 
we can then switch to one of my established virtual environments, like Broker. We can then switch to another one, Robotello. And then we'll create a brand new one altogether by saying switch understanding. So the name of our virtual environment will be understanding. And finally, switch all the way back out into our main environment. Easy enough. Now, if we look at the help text for the Venv module, we can see there are a few more arguments that we can pass in. We can include the system site packages. So say you had a baseline of packages that you want to use from your system. You can include all of those site packages by passing in that flag. This way you don't have to reinstall things that you already have installed on your main system. However, additional packages installed will remain isolated on the virtual environment. Also, if symlinks are not the default for your operating system, you can pass in the dash dash symlinks flag. You can also alternate that by saying copies instead of symlinks. There are additional arguments for clearing the contents of an existing environment, as well as upgrading the system Python within the virtual environment. If you don't want pip installed as part of the virtual environment creation, like we saw initially, you can pass in without pip. Additionally, if you want to upgrade the core dependencies, there is an upgrade depths flag as well. However, now you understand the in and outs of virtual environments. And that wraps up this video. Now that you understand how to create and use virtual environments, you can easily switch between different development environments. What is your favorite trick when working with Python virtual environments? Or was it something I showed today? Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover, leave a comment for me. To keep up with this series, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.